Welcome to The Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Isn't it interesting that while natural gas prices are skyrocketing, we are watching explosions going on at the different facilities for natural gas? Seems a little unusual. I'm also going to talk about how there are bank runs going on in China today. So this is going to be a mega video. Let's begin. Here we have it. Massive explosion at natural gas plant in Oklahoma. So you could see it for yourself. And I I will show that to you. You could see right now, I will load that video up. You can take a look. Pretty serious to say the least. Now you might say, hey, it happens. And that's certainly the case. Just like the food processing plants that we watch over and over again occur. Yes, that happened two years ago. Yes, it happened five years ago and beyond. But when you see this happening so regularly, to me, it's very unusual. How about this? This is in reverse chronological order. And you could see July 9th, natural gas plant explosion. You look down and even further, January, July 7th, energy transfer pipeline explosion. What about this? June 27th, petrol star refinery explosion, LNG natural gas plant explosion in Texas. Go back to April. There are others. March, February. We go back into 2021. More and more and more. And like I said, these things do happen. Accidents do happen. But is this all an accident? Are some of them accidents? Or is it really just something else happening here? I don't have all the answers. I don't know. I bring that to you and I ask you this. I simply provide you the data and you look at it. With the prices so high, with the supply chain all messed up, with companies profiting be beyond anything we've ever seen before, and you look at all of these different things adding up and something smells a little fishy. That's all I'm saying. And that brings me to this. Francis Lemaire. Total Russian gas cutoff is most likely scenario. We have to anticipate and put ourselves in order of battle as of now. So the French minister is basically saying, look, we are encountering problems with Russia. We've relied on Russia so much. We got rid of you know, all the other sources. We got rid of the nuclear. We stopped doing this and that. And we basically said, Hey, Russia, you're going to provide all our energy now. It's going to be cheap. It's going to be effective. We'll set up the pipelines. Everything's all good. It's just one problem. When you go to war with a country, you kind of have a problem, you know, with your imports and your exports. That's probably the case. So we see that today and we understand that this is an issue that probably is going to be prolonged, at least for the next little while. And that's a fact. Knowing this, hey, we need to find alternative forms of energy. We need to find alternative uh, means of accessing natural gas for one. And so, you know, they talk about that in here. Basically, that's, that's the message. They need to resolve this immediately. They need to prepare right now under the assumption that this war drags on, that the problems are not going to be resolved. And so what does that mean for you, the individual higher prices that you will pay. That seems like, a, you know, I don't want to say the best case scenario because it could go much worse than this. It certainly could. Now, this is talking about wind power or, or wind speed specifically. But the reason I mention this is not because, you know, people should start to take on wind power or solar or whatever it might be. The reason I show you this is I believe that certain areas of, of the world or, or, your, or your country that you're in it has certain advantages, okay? So in this case here, the wind speed up from Canada all the way down into the US, where you look at this area has much higher wind speed than the rest. So it's more appropriate to have wind power generated here. You don't want to generate wind power if you're in Georgia. It's probably not gonna be a good idea. But if you're in California, Maybe solar power is fantastic. Maybe it's fantastic because you've got, you know, such dry climate and so on, other places too. So it all depends. It depends on where you are. The best source of power, if you're in Iceland, maybe geothermal is not going to be the, a good thing to have if you're in Florida. Let's say, I don't know. I'm just making it up. But the point is, 
where you are needs to make sense what you're trying to produce. That's all I'm saying. Europe's rush to buy Africa's natural gas draws cries of hypocrisy. The EU wants to import as much African gas as it can, but doesn't want to fund projects that would allow the world's poorest continent to burn more of the fuel at home. And basically, they make the argument in here and saying they're extracting the resources, but they are not doing anything to actually help the situation. They're not seeing any benefit financially. The businesses are, are taking that and they're looting the people, essentially. And this has been a battle that's been going on for a long time. And of course, there's much exploitation going on, not just in Africa, but in other places around the world. I want to know your thoughts about this and, you know, when you see different companies or different countries, maybe China is moving into Africa and they're doing different infrastructure, who is really benefiting? That's the question I always ask myself, okay? And if you appreciate this information, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. The stuff I'm talking about here isn't exactly, you know, gonna be on front page news. So I appreciate when you do that, okay? Because I'm trying to bring you the good stuff. Pork price, this is in China. Pork price swings are likely to narrow in the future. They're talking about the excessive movements in the price of pork at this time. And this is something that, you know, whether you will have the pork or not, you know, I'm just trying to show you here that if a country is reliant on a particular commodity until there's stabilization and I should say price coming down specifically, not just stabilization, uh, you know, it causes chaos. And then you have, what we have with the Arab Spring, I showed you in the previous video to this one, prices have risen to a record high. Today, they're at a record high. We've never seen anything like this before. So, of course, there's going to be social unrest. Of course, there's going to be people on the streets. It doesn't necessarily have to break out because of one factor or another, but people are pushed to the edge, whether that's China or whether that's the United States or anywhere else. You see this. All over the place. This is UK. Almost 4.5 million UK families are in serious financial trouble. So we see this at the time. 36% of households facing hardship. Just imagine what, as interest rates tick up towards the end of the year. This number is going to go up, my friends. We need to be prepared today in any way that we possibly can, okay? Okay, now we're going to talk about China. So hang in there for a moment. I know we're flipping gears. I know we're changing gears. Let just understand that this is a perfect storm. Everything is moving into this direction. And I want people to be aware of it all. Okay, I'm not going to do algorithm stuff. I'm going to bring you the information you need to know. Okay, Chinese protesters demanding bank deposits tussle with security men. Several people protesting over the freezing of deposits by some rural-based banks said that they were injured on Sunday when heavy-handed security personnel dispersed the crowd. The bank froze millions of dollars worth of deposits in April, telling customers that they were upgrading their internal systems. The banks have not issued any communication on the matter since, according to the depositors. Now, is this affecting all 1.45 billion people in China? No. It's not. Has this happened before? Yes, it has. We've seen different instances of this. I've covered them before. But here's another one. Here is some of that you know, video. You could see it for yourself. Take a look at this. I mean, they're just going wild. They're throwing stuff. And it looks like they've got people on the inside. And I'll show you another video about this uh, here momentarily. You could see this is just basically just a wall of these you know, the black and white, as they talk about here, I believe I have a, another statement about that. And they basically form a human chain and block these people from getting in. They just wanted their money back. They're fed up. This is huge. Don't know how this will end. Henan, Henan Bank is not the only one that is having problems with the liquidity. All four Chinese banks are having the same issue. Some depositors found they can save and cannot withdraw money with their bank cards. Okay, so there you go. So you could see this video as it plays right now. I hope you can see that. Uh, it's a very bad quality in this one, but it will um, show you in just a second. Look, I mean, this is incredible to see. They're saying return my deposit. You know, it looks like there's a lot of people who are affected by this. And this is why we cannot trust this system. 
We cannot rely on this system. It's been too far. It's gone on too long. That people rely on, uh, you know, not, not a bank, like whatever. This bank is just one of those banks. As they say here, it's actually four Chinese banks. But you're going to see it right now. Okay, look at this chaos. So the people are running in. Watch these people running in as they do this. And you will see what occurs. This is when people get fed up. I mean, they are just, they just had enough. And they're running in and they're getting pelted with, what is this, bottles or what have you. But all I'm trying to show you is, all I'm noting this is that it's got nothing to do with China. It's got nothing to do with this particular bank. It's got everything to do with the chaos, the social unrest that is breaking out. If these people were financially well off, this wouldn't happen. This wouldn't happen. But these people are pushed to the edge. It's because they're, maybe their pork prices have gone up. Maybe their other food prices have gone up. Maybe the prices that they pay for their energy have gone up. You see what happens? And then people reach the breaking point and they lose it all. Okay. Now, I had about 10,000 more things to show you today. But I'm going to leave it there. Everything is brewing into this perfect storm. I'm trying to highlight that as best I can. If you appreciate the information, hit that thumbs up button. What can we do? We can actively take part in, you know, eliminating ourselves from the system as best we can. Becoming self-sufficient, you know, it's obviously best for us. It's best for our families, our neighbors, the people around us. But, you know, by you becoming a little bit more self-sufficient, it kind of lightens the load for everyone else. So even though you might be trying to help all yourself, you're kind of helping everyone else at the same time. So growing that garden means you're going to be taking the food for, you know, in the best possible way, but you're also not going to the store as much. You're also not, you know, engaging in this system that they have us constantly consuming in. So that's just the way I think about it. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about that in my second book. But anyway, the, the point is here, I think everybody should be aware of what's happening, all these details, and simply be open-minded about it all. Okay, If you're not part of the 282 crew, that's 282,000 people that are on this channel right now, you've got to join. Hit that subscribe button. I do a video every single day, 365 days a year, and I hope you will be one of the 282 crew. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.